The atmospheric river known as the jet stream continues to challenge and baffle forecasters with a chaotic flow across the country as both the polar jet stream and subtropical jet stream duke it out for dominance. We'll talk more about it in today's report. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Weather Nerds YouTube page. I'm meteorologist Greg Majeski, and today we're gonna to be talking about the chaotic flow of the jet stream across the country. It's been a bit of a forecasting challenge for forecasters over the last few days, and it looks like that chaos is gonna continue in the days ahead. So we're gonna zoom in a little bit closer here on the European model. This is showing the jet stream, about 27,000 feet or so, of the airflow across the country. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pause this here right at the end of this loop. And I want to point out a couple things for you, okay? I want to draw out some things that you can kind of see the illustration. You've got the, the main jet of the polar jet kind of sitting up in here. You've got a kind of a subtropical jet kind of doing this thing here. And they're, they're not in what we call a phase. They're not kind of working together. They're actually working against each other. So as a result, you're getting these smaller little systems that are popping up. You've got this little low here, little cutoff low here. You've got a cutoff low sitting over here. You've got another one up here off the Bay of Alaska, another low here. You've got one here over the Arctic. You've got one down here over the Hudson Bay. So you're kind of getting my point. You're getting these weaker systems that are all over the place and they keep pinching off these little lows. And it makes forecasting very much a major challenge uh, with the jet streams not in tandem. Now, when they do become phased, forecasting for a big weather event is pretty easy. But when they're small like this, it definitely means makes very challenging forecasts, especially long term. So if you watch anybody online or even in your hometown uh, weather station giving you absolutes in their forecasts right now, that's not happening. Now, one of the forecasting tools I like to use when I'm trying to predict what's going to be going on for the next couple of weeks is called the North Atlantic Oscillation. It kind of shows the different phases of the jet stream. So kind of zooming in here closely here, you can see all these red squiggly lines. They represent different models that are extrapolating out what it's expected, say, from about the 15th of the month out to the end of the month. And you notice there's a very wide range here of forecasting models. This little solid line right through here represents the kind of neutral zone or the zero line, shall we say. And it's trending to a positive phase. And when it's in a positive phase like that, the jet streams, again, are not working in tandem and you're not getting any major storm systems uh, developing across the country, especially the eastern part of the country. Let's take a look at this graphically. Now, checking out this graphic here, you can see the difference between the two phases. When we're in a negative phase, the jet stream is working together, and that's typically when we get the big Arctic outbreaks to come down out of Canada, we'll get big warming out in the West. When we're in a positive phase or neutral phase, you typically get a kind of a fast flowing flow across the country, and the jet streams are not working together. The subtropical jet stream and the polar jet stream or the Arctic jet stream are all kind of working against each other, and you typically get smaller, weaker systems, which are much more difficult to forecast, especially long term. So coming back to the European forecast model, and I've had folks ask me, why do I use the European? Well, right now, it's been the most consistent between the American GFS model. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to use this one as far as the next seven days are concerned. And first, we're going to go ahead and focus in on the activity in the Gulf of Mexico. So we're going to shift it to the east side of the United States. As uh, this low pressure system is bringing some beneficial rains for areas across the deep south that have been dealing with uh, dry drought like conditions across the region. And we're going to watch a new area of low pressure that's going to form off the eastern seaboard as that energy is going to kind of transfer and it's going to race itself up the eastern seaboard. Uh, I think most of the activity is going to stay offshore as we're going to watch some energy kind of dive in here from the west. Uh, with a cold front uh, kind of diving into Canada. Let's go ahead and step you through this slowly here as we go into the days ahead as we're looking at Wednesday and then going into Thursday morning. That's when uh, things will begin to switch over from Thursday into Friday as that new low pressure kind of sits up off the eastern seaboard. You see the front there kind of draped itself across the east there coming in through New York State and coming down toward Tennessee as we go into the day on Friday night and into Saturday. So continuing to step through this again for this upcoming weekend, uh, going into Sunday, 
uh, the 18th. You see the low just off the uh, shoreline of Maine as the cold air kind of filters in behind the system here across the northeast with some colder temperatures uh, coming into New York State, Pennsylvania, uh, and also into Maine uh, with that one weather system there. The rest of the country looking quiet as high pressure settles in across the eastern third of the United States. Now we're going to go ahead and shift out toward the west. I'm going to back this uh, timeline back up once again. And we're going to talk about uh, the system that's off the West Coast. We've got an area of low pressure just off your map there that's been spinning there for days. It's a cutoff low. And right now it's forecasted to begin to move inland. And as it does so, it's going to move... Uh, you're going to lose it actually briefly across the Rockies, but it should reinvigorate here in the middle of the country as we head toward next week. So let's go ahead and step you through this as we go through time again, going from Tuesday into Wednesday morning. Uh, you're seeing the rains off the West Coast, and some of it finally comes in as we head late in the day on Wednesday, San Francisco, uh, getting down toward Los Angeles with some of the range, kind of little impulses, almost like a pinwheel spinning energy off uh, across California, but they're not going to get nearly the uh, amplitude of snows that was looking the, like earlier last week. So as this low pressure finally moves on in, you're going to notice, hey, where did it go? It kind of disappeared there a little bit briefly. It's sitting somewhere in here, but eventually it'll rematerialize out here in the middle of the country and uh, we'll kind of move off toward the east, which could make for some travel headaches uh, going into Tuesday of next week. So this is going into uh, throughout the day on Sunday, so finally seeing some rains break out there across Kansas. There's the low across Texas with some rains across eastern Texas and going into Arkansas as we go in through the day on Monday, seeing some storms down near Houston as the storm system progresses off toward the east heading into Tuesday morning. So by Tuesday morning, uh, this is on the 21st, which is, of course, getting to be a busy, busy travel day. You're seeing the area of low pressure right here with a trailing front uh, coming into Mississippi and Alabama. And that could hamper some travel there at Atlanta Hartsville Jackson uh, going in toward Wednesday. So I'm just going to keep it to seven days for right now uh, as these models are changing so much from run to run. Uh, if you could do me a favor, please, if you could go ahead and hit my subscribe button there. Hit the thumbs up tab and hit the notification bell so you're alerted to new content. Uh, i got to figure out this whole YouTube algorithm game, and you can help me out by becoming a subscriber. Again, you guys take it easy. I appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next report. Have a good day.